It's no secret that 2022 was a rough year for the tech sector, with some big names like Nvidia, Tesla, and Facebook's parent company Meta all falling by 50% or more. But as they say, past performance is not an indicator of future returns. Many investors are now wondering if there are some beaten down bargains in the tech sector. So if you're thinking long term, here are some leading tech ETFs to consider. In this video, we will discuss how the ETF has done since the start of last year until now and how it's done so far from the start of 2023. We will use the tech ETF QQQ, which tracks the NASDAQ, to gauge the overall return of the ETF. Then we will dive into some of the top holdings within that ETF, as well as discuss a little about what the particular ETF focuses on. Keep in mind that the market is always changing and the best performing sectors can shift quickly. So to keep updated, be sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell so you can be amongst the first to know when more investment inspiration videos are available. Speaking about always changing, the charts used in this video were done using live data and the QQQ numbers slightly vary over the course of 15 minutes when I was capturing these screens. So bear with me. We're going to start off today with the largest way to go, which is broad sector exposure, and then zoom in to sector by sector industry specific ETFs. Therefore, first on our list, the Vanguard Information Technology ETF, ticker symbol VGT. Now, VGT is one of the leading technology ETFs to consider for investment. This is truly the largest sector specific technology ETF with around 39 billion in assets. Compared with QQQ, over the course since January of 2022, VGT is down about 3.3% less, showing us a 27.3, showing us a negative 27.3% return versus the QQQ, which posted a negative 30.69% return. Year to date, Vanguard is slightly ahead of QQQ as well as posting a 4.3% year to date return over QQQ's 3.5. It is important to note that VGT has a heavy weighting toward larger tech stocks. The way that this ETF picks the stocks is based on the size of the company. This means that even though there are 371 stocks in this ETF, nearly 60% of all the portfolio's assets are in the top 10 positions, with Apple and Microsoft alone accounting for 39% of this fund. This ETF is relatively cheap fee-wise. They only charge a 0.1% or $10 for every $10,000 invested fee. However, due to its heavy weighting towards the larger companies, this fund does not offer a lot of diversification in terms of the type of companies it holds. Currently, this ETF pays out a 1.13% dividend yield. Narrowing our focus to specific spaces within technology, we come to the VanX Semiconductor ETF, ticker symbol SMH. This ETF focuses on chip makers. With the recent challenges faced by global supply chains and chip makers during the pandemic, semiconductor stocks have been gaining attention from investors. Compared to QQQ, SMH was down 2% less, showing us a negative 28.69% return versus the QQQ's 30.69%. Year to date though, SMH is way ahead of QQQ posting an 11.2% year-to-date return over the QQQ's 3.3%. This ETF from Vanek has grown to more than 6 billion in assets, and with just 26 names, it's much less diversified than the VGR. Its top holdings include Taiwanese Semiconductor, Nvidia, and Broadcom. If you're interested in investing in this specific corner of technology, SMH is the leading ETF to consider. SMH still has a relatively strong dividend for being up 11% on the year. It currently pays out a 1.09% dividend yield. Next on our list, we venture into cybersecurity. The First Trust NASDAQ Cybersecurity ETF, ticker symbol CIBR. Now this ETF has recently been gaining popularity this fund focuses on the cybersecurity sector and it has attracted investors due to the growing trend of cybersecurity spending, as well as short term risk brought by the Russian invasion of Ukraine. Compared to QQQ, CIBR is down 3.6% less, 
showing us a negative 27.2% return since January of last year versus QQQ of negative 30.84. Year to date though, CIBR is lagging the NASDAQ, posting a negative 1.3% year to date return compared to NASDAQ's 3.6%. Cybersecurity is an increasingly important issue for businesses, governments, and consumers, as seen by recent ransomware attacks in Poland and Ukraine. With the growing threat of a cyber attack and the need for stronger cybersecurity measures, companies in this sector are likely to see strong growth in 2023. CIBR has 41 stocks in it, and it's led by stocks such as Palo Alto Networks, Fortinet, and Cisco, all of which are well-established companies in the cybersecurity industry. Currently, CIBR pays a small dividend yield of 0.31%. The next name on our list focuses on software, the iShares Expanded Tech Software Sector ETF IGV. Now this ETF focuses specifically on the software sector and does not include any hardware or tangible related technology companies. Now compared to the QQQ, IGV did take a harder hit as many of these services were cut out of businesses. IGV is down 3.6% more, showing us a negative 34.21% return since January of last year versus the QQQ with a negative 30.67%. Year to date, IGV is also lagging, posting a 3% year to date return compared to the positive 3.3 by the QQQ. Of its 125 holdings, include top names such as Adobe, Salesforce, and Oracle, all of which are known for their software. Microsoft also makes an appearance in this ETF, but it's important to note that the fund is not primarily formulated based on the size of the companies. This ETF offers a more refined exposure to the software stocks and has an AUM of about $4 billion. So if you're looking for a more specific exposure to the software sector and want to avoid the usual consumer hardware and chip maker names, IGV is worth considering. IGV currently doesn't pay any dividends though. Our last ETF on the list today offers a more global approach to investing in technology. The iShares Global Tech ETF, IXN. With about 20% of its assets located outside of the US, this ETF offers a diverse portfolio of technology companies from all around the world. IXN is also down 4.22% less than the QQQ, showing us a negative 26.6% return since January of last year versus the QQQ with a negative 30.84. Compared to the rest of the members on this list, IXN is the leading ETF in this category. Also, year-to-date, IXN is outperforming the NASDAQ, posting a 4.3% year-to-date return compared to QQQ's positive 3.6. You'll find many of the same Silicon Valley giants within its 145 holdings, like Apple, in the CTF. But you'll also find names like Samsung Electronics from Korea and lesser-known Chinese hardware companies, as well as leading tech companies from Europe. Investing in technology companies across different countries can provide a layer of geographic diversification and offer more opportunities in 2023. Currently, IXN pays a 0.79% dividend yield. I hope you enjoyed this list of the specific types of technology ETFs. For more lists like this one, be sure to subscribe and check out our dividend growth video next.